Ulla Ulla Kumustas Buenos Tales. <laughs> Hi everyone, hope you are having a beautiful time. Wherever you're watching from, you know, there is this pressing and concerning issue. For the past few years, the Igbos have been threatening to exit Nigeria. They've been saying we want Biafra. We want Biafra. And if you look at it from my point of view, I think they are right. If you look at it from my point of view, then you find out that we have been unable to produce an Igbo president for over two decades, which is concerning to me. You know, the first civilian president we have in Nigeria was Olusegun Obasanjo, who is a Yoruba man. Then after Obasanjo, we have Umaru Musayaradua, who was from the northern part of Nigeria. And then we have good luck Jonathan. Jonathan is from the Middle Belt, a Bayosa man. After good luck Jonathan, we produce another president from northern Nigeria, Muhammadu Buhari. After Buhari, then we have another Yoruba president, Bola Tinobu. So the question is, why haven't we been able to produce an Igbo president since 1999? It's been 24 years. What has the Igbos done wrong? Is it that they don't have the right to govern Nigeria? Is it that they don't have the capacity to produce a president of Nigeria. Then, if your answer is yes, that they don't have the right to govern Nigeria, that they don't have the right to produce a president, then I think it's time you just let them go. I mean, they are not asking for too much. They are just saying, we want to have a president who is an Igbo man. We want to have a sense of belonging if you call us Nigerians, if you say it's one Nigeria, then why are we not seen in that position of leadership? Why are we being marginalized by the political elite of Nigeria? So that is the discussion we are having today. You know, this topic interests me because sometimes when we fight ourselves on social media, I see some people say things like, this is why the Igbos will never be president. This is why the Igbos will never govern Nigeria. You know, and if you say things like that to me, it's like you degrading a tribe, to be sincere. It's like you trying to shame a tribe. It's like you not showing respect to a tribe. Knowing fully well they have not been given the same chance. Knowing fully well that they have not had their own chances to be a president. And you go online to throw this kind of shade and you want them to say oh we are brothers no that's you looking for a fight and they will give it to you it's concerning and shameful when i see this kind of comments these are things we shouldn't be doing as nigerians these are things we shouldn't be saying to each other to spite one another so i started making my own research to know if there is an agreement or any agreement in place in the 1999 constitution that talks about zoning the presidency in Nigeria. And I found an amazing write-up by Ruben Abati, which I'm going to read to you guys. It is often argued that zoning is not expressly stated in either the 1999 constitution or the Electoral Act, but it was a convenient measure adopted by the People's Democratic Party in 1999 with the return of civilian rule in order to ensure equity, justice, and a sense of ownership in the political representation process. Even though the word zoning underlined is not used in the 1999 constitution, it is nonetheless in line with the ideas of federal character as stated in section 14.3, 147.3 and 
and the establishment of a federal character commission in section 153 1c and, and part 1c of the third schedule. The principle is that in a multi-plural diverse country like Nigeria with over 400 ethnic nationalities, it is important that every group is given a sense of belonging. It is important that every group is given a sense of belonging and participation to promote national unity and loyalty and to prevent overt domination of some sections of the country and to prevent overt domination of some sections of the country which if we are being sincere to ourselves isn't that what has been happening for the past 25 years some some sections of the country has dominated us other sections of the country which shouldn't be happening if we say we want one Nigeria if, if we say that they can have Biafra then they need to have that sense of belonging we, then we need to give them a chance you know to be president there is no two ways to that if you say we are one Nigeria then we need to be given equal opportunity in the political space there should be no double standards it is in this sense that zoni or the concept of rotational presidency is a derivative of the federal character principle since, since independence this principle has been a source of tension and conflict among the various ethnic nationalities region and zones that make up nigeria with minority groups protesting over their marginalization by majorities and great discontent over the distribution of power and position by leaders who assume office and resort to politics of hegemony, nepotism and favoritism to the advantage of their own ethnic stock. To the advantage of their own ethnic stock. So if you look at this write-up, you see there is no place in the constitution that talks about zoning of the presidency. But the question is, shouldn't we have equal opportunities when it comes to the Nigerian political space? When it comes to the Nigerian political elite, shouldn't we have equal opportunities? That's, that is the question we should, we should ask ourselves. The only reason they seem angry right now is because they've been unable to produce a president in two decades. That's a long time if you ask me. So if you claim to be one Nigeria, if you claim to uh, be a nation, you know, that gives equal opportunity, then we need to promote, not just talk about this, we need to promote equal opportunities, especially in the highest position of the country. And if you think they don't have the right to be president, if you think they don't have what it takes to rule Nigeria, then I think it's fair enough to just let them go. It's as simple as that. If they can't be part of the ruling elite, then let them go. Who should we blame for this nemesis? That's a good question. Maybe, just maybe, the Igbo political elite have an agreement we don't actually have a knowledge of. I think there is one thing the Igbo political elites are not telling us as Nigerians, are not telling the Igbos as well. Because since 1999, I have noticed one trend amongst the Igbo political elite. So, which is, since 1999, we've had more than 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We've had six Senate presidents in Nigeria of Igbos. So that's why I think maybe there is something the Igbo political elites are not telling us as Nigerians. In 1999, the Senate president was Ivan Enwarem, followed by Shuba Okadigo, followed by Ayim Pius Ayim, followed by Adufos Wabara, followed by Ken Ugu Unamani, followed by David. Mark. Then the trend changed when Buhari came into power. That was the first time we produced a Senate president who is Yoruba, and that's the person of Bukola Saraki. Then later, Ahmed Lawan came into power as the Senate president and is from the northern part of Nigeria. Immediately Tinubu came into power, the trend continues. 
and he made God's will a Pabio, the Senate president. So, is there something the evil political elites are not telling us? Because they keep getting the Senate president seats. Is, is there an agreement in place that says if we can get the presidency, then we should be made the Senate president? So that's a question we need to ask the Igbo political elites. And as I always say to my Igbo brothers, electing a president is a collective effort. It's not something you can do alone, you know. And to make an Igbo person a president, you need more friends than enemies. There's no two ways to that. Because at the end of the day, majority carries the vote. You need people to vote an Igbo man into power. That's the only way this can change. That's the only way to make an Igbo man a president through election. And how do you do that if you make enemies with people who would actually help you elect an Igbo man? I'm just saying, in your own best interest, make more friends than enemies. You need to have this conversation with the young and old Yoruba people, with the young and old people from the north. You know, we need to sit and settle our differences because that is the only way forward. If we keep fighting ourselves, then what is the way forward? We've been fighting for too long. What have we achieved, you know, with this fight, with these quarrels, aside scoring a point on social media? At the end of the day, you will need substantial amount of votes from the southwest and the northern part to elect a president. So to do this, you need to come together. We need to have a conversation to, you know, let go of this bad blood between us as Nigerians. Because at the end of the day, Nigeria is the only place we all have to call a home. If, it, if it's destroyed, then what is the future? of our own kids in a nutshell all i'm saying is if we claim to be one nigeria if we claim to be brothers and sisters then i see no reason why we should at least have one Igbo president in two decades you know that means they've not been given an equal opportunity equal chance you know to govern the country They've been marginalized for too long. We need to give them that sense of belonging. And if we find it difficult to do that, then I think it's just time to let them go. If they can be the head of state, if they can be the president, then what's the point? What's the point that we have a tribe with over 20 something million or 30 million and they can't even produce one president in two decades? I mean, it, it's shameful. It's shameful. So, thank you guys for watching this video. If you enjoyed this video, do me a favor by smashing that like and subscribe button. And don't forget to drop a comment in the comment section to give me your own take concerning this situation. See you guys on the next one. Peace out. <music>